Now, I am going to move on from that one which is about fashion uh, translation to makeup translation and makeover. And of course, makeover, as I said earlier in uh, the, the video about fashion translation, is that, that you will have not only brand names uh, that are used, um, but also some terminology and glossary that you need to be aware of and you need to know what it means. Like, for example, when we say about makeover, and it's to do with the hair and the, and the way uh, you look, um, is um, slightly different from makeup. Makeup, of course, it's to do with the actual um, uh, putting some uh, uh, foundation or um, uh, uh, using the lip uh, liner or eyeliner and blusher and so on. These are, of course, some tools and some... Uh, little uh, instruments or um, uh, some powders and um, uh, uh, mascara, the volume and so on, and uh, anti-water, anti-water-resistant uh, uh, mascara and so on, uh, uh, which I sometimes call mascara, um, uh, even though uh, uh, it, it, uh, it's a kind of mascara uh, to, to put some... Uh, uh, some um, um, the um, Kohl, or kohl, as they call it in English, which is from Arabic, kohl, to actually line the eyes with, or the eyelashes. And of course the eyebrows uh, uh, will, will be touched uh, a little bit with the um, uh, mascara thing. So anyway, what is important is, uh, is that uh, there are, as I said before about highlights uh, for the hair, as opposed to highlights in another area, uh, or depression, for example, which is used in meteorology, and 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 also uh, to mean to mean there is a low pressure in the air um, and pockets of air uh, for depression, and then you have depression for psychology, which is completely different. So, uh, with regards to the highlights of the of, of the hair then you need to know that they are coloring the hair, some parts of it, with different colors. Um, and you need to be aware what kind of uh, words that you need to be giving. Uh, a, a lip liner or an eyeliner, uh, these are, for the translator, you need to be aware what they are first. And of course, if you watch any of these videos that are, or, or any text that you see in makeup, you will find that they are actually uh, each one is highly specialized, for example, about the shining, um, different uh, level of um, uh, colors, the colors, the shades of the colors that are different. And, and it is very difficult uh, to actually describe the colors and different colors. I had one student at one time, she was only involved in translating colors and different shades of colors, not in makeup, but in general, like in painting or whatever. So it is quite challenging, the shades, the different types of shades of the color and um, that you need to be aware, uh, aware of. And um, of course, um, the physical, uh, the, the cheeks, um, when you're using foundation and uh, uh, what would you call it? Creme l'assas, which is foundation cream or, um, or, or, or uh, sometimes it's a powder. Um, so... Um, uh, these are um, elements that you need to be aware of what they are used, how they are used, uh, what, kind, what is the blusher, what, how does it, uh, uh, to remove blemishes, what are the blemishes and what's the uh, black spots and things like that. And um, that you need to be aware what they are uh, so that when you are translating this kind of uh, terminology, you need to be, uh, to understand the actual concept behind uh, the word, what, what does this word mean and, and how it is used. It's very much similar, though it's an analogy here, and please don't actually uh, uh, link the two and say uh, doctor is mean, uh, linking two things that are completely different. This is what analogy is. Um, when you are, for example, if you are male and you are um, uh, into cars and into engines, um, and somebody asks you to translate 
the engine of a car and you need to know how the engine works, uh, what are the parts and how do the parts work together and so on. So you need to be, um, again, in, in, in makeup, you need to be aware of what is, uh, what's the difference between a blusher and uh, an eyeliner and, um, um, you know, that makes wings and so on. Uh, these are all important in information that you need to be um, uh, really, um, um, or false eyelashes um, and, and, um, and the mask and, and, and all these uh, muds that you can use as well. So these are all elements and these are all knowledge and, and information in the field, in the domain that you need to be um, aware of what they are. If you don't know what they are and how they are used as well, not only just what they are, but they, how they are used, and whether my audience, as a, as a translator, my readership, whether they do understand whether the communication is going on is, is, is being understood. As Debo Grant in 1981 said, uh, non, uh, 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 nonsensical te te text, nonsensical text is uh, a non-text. And if it's uh, non-text, it's non-communicable. There's no communication going on. So the idea is communication. That's the issue that is um, really worrying when you are translating and if you are communicating the information well or not. And whether you, you are aware that the, the readers, the audience who are reading your, your uh, text in uh, fashion or in makeup, they do understand what you're saying so they can use it. And of course, you need to be aware of, for example, if there are some dyes that are used for the hair, what kind of ingredients that go into the dye. You might be translating a leaflet that is inside, um, uh, or you might be translating some sort of creams that are used for the night and for the day, even for wrinkles and, and, and for blemishes um, that are on the, uh, on the cheeks. Um, so you need to be aware of that. You need to also be aware of... Um, uh, different shades of the lips and lip, lip gloss and uh, that kind of thing. And you need to know the difference between different uh, uh, the blushers, what the blushers are and what's the foundation as opposed to what's a, a lip gloss and, and, and uh, the lip liner to the actual eyeliner. And of course, um, eyeshadows and, and then it, uh, the eyeshadows and, and these are all the shades as well that you have used uh, you, you use and the colors that you are using need to be named in in the target language so that is also another problem and sometimes some of the students or some of the uh, translators ten, they tend to anglicize or use anglicism in their translation using a lot of words that are in english and uh, they're not in their target language which you need to be avoiding uh, as much as possible. Why? Because your audience, your readers, uh, the people who are receiving, the recipients, um, they need to get the message across. So, yes, I would say uh, communicative translation is the one that you need to go for. Well, that is what I would say for all types of translations, um, uh, 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 that, uh, that the translations need to be communicative. Uh, it has a function. The, that function is, uh, what's the purpose of that translation? The purpose of that translation, for example, about the makeup, about a certain cream, is to pass the message and tell the information um, the, uh, that's been offered in the source text, uh, trying to tell that information um, to the audience um, uh, in such a way that they will understand that will, uh, they will understand that and, 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 and it will be very easy for them to follow as readers of your text. So that is really what is important. I know it's a, it's a functionalist approach, but functionalist approach which focuses like Scopus, uh, uh, Vermeer, um, uh, and when he talks about Scopus, Scopus theory and, and uh, the purpose of translation, uh, you need to know what the purpose of the translation and that's through the brief which you get from your client who tells you translation. The translation brief is very, very important. Why do I, why am I doing this translation? What, who is, who are my audience? Um, and there are certain terminologies that maybe they will ask you to keep them as, as they are 
in the actual source text as well. So the brief um, from the client about the translation uh, text that you are going about to uh, uh, start or, 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 or uh, you, you need to, uh, about to begin to do, um, you need to have that brief. And um, uh, it needs to be communicated well uh, to you first as a translator and then you can mix the two things which are the knowledge that you get from the text, okay, what the text is offering, the information that the text is offering you, um, plus on top of the information that's being offered by the source text, um, you are to take what is the purpose of the translation um, and who are the readers of your translation. Once you know these, you, this kind of combination together, this kind of mix together will give you a good uh, communicative translation that everybody can understand and then they, they can follow. I mean, some uh, uh, theorists, um, when you're talking about translation and pragmatics here, um, they are uh, more um, concerned about, um, uh, or they are more focused upon, upon uh, the purpose of the translation and the brief and, and, and the readership um, of the target language or the target audience. And of course, the purpose of the target um, uh, text uh, or, tar or the translation might be a little bit different from the purpose of the original uh, text or the uh, ST uh, that's being given. Um, these uh, theorists uh, in uh, pragmatics and translation, they are saying that you are dethroning the source text. In other words, you are putting forward in the forefront, in the foreground, the purpose of the translation. And then at the back, you put the actual uh, source text, uh, which is providing you with information. Now, going back to um, uh, uh, the um, uh, uh, makeup uh, translation, what you need to be doing is you need to understand really well the techniques. Um, the techniques is translated as methods. Uh, and it's not technology. Some, some translators to translate the word techniques as technology. It's not. Or technologies. Takniya. Um, Takniyat. No. It is not technology. Technique is the method, the way. That is the technique. So you need to know the techniques of putting the blusher, uh, the techniques. You need to know them. You don't need to do them yourself, of course, especially if you are a male. Um, uh, I mean, unless you are specialized in, in, in makeup and in salons and so on. Uh, so you need to be uh, aware of these techniques, um, uh, uh, i.e. ways of putting the blusher, of putting the, uh, uh, the foundation, the eyeliners, how to use them. Um, and, and, and these um, will help you in explaining uh, how to put a certain... Um, product which um, um, one of the clients have actually bought from the market and she needs to know how to put them on her face um, or to use them. Um, uh, so um, uh, the information that you're translating is extremely important to be communicative to such kind of audience.